Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your July 2023 New Moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel be seen by the YouTube algorithm, and it helps me out tremendously, so thank you so very much for doing so. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see the energy we need to be mindful of during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Okay, so it's the hangman reverse. We're seeing things differently. And we've always kind of seen things differently, but now we're seeing things differently again. It's kind of like it's a change in our worldview. And it's really throwing us for a loop. We can be very hard on ourselves. We can be very negative to ourselves. We can be very overwhelmed. We can be listening to everybody else and trying to fit in to a world that right now might not seem like we fit. And we can be very harsh on ourselves because of that. There's nothing wrong with us. That is something that spirit wants you to know absolutely and positively, Capricorn. It's just that we're going through a shift and shifts are never comfortable. <laughs> you know, it's a move. Moves are very stressful. So just be, be aware of this. We're also in Cancer time frame, right? Cancer is our, is our sister sign. And so we're, we have a Cancer new moon. We are in a Cancer sun. And that time could be making us look at things very, very differently. And it can be one of the best things for us, but it can also be a time frame where we find it's just a little bit more difficult. You know, it's just a little bit more sticky than it usually is. So just be aware of that. So let's see what spirit has to say. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels. Here we have luminous. Yeah, the moon means a lot to us. And the moon is going to be very powerfully guiding us forward, leading us towards so much more than we had imagined. And it's going to have us seeing things in a very real way. So just know that the moon is, is very powerful for us. It's illuminating a lot, even though it's a new moon. So it's not illuminating anything. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. So let's talk about this time, astrologically speaking. The new moon is in Cancer. It's on July 17th. It's at 24 degrees, 56 seconds of Cancer. And it is a very powerful new moon. Cancer is an extremely sensitive, kind, empathetic, nurturing, caring sign. It's usually linked with the mother or motherhood. And it's very interesting, that link, because Cancer represents the crab, though that's not what we think of when we first hear the word cancer. We think of the disease. And so here it can be it can be scary. It can be overwhelming. It can be intense. And this is going to be a time where we start to see the 
representation of the crab as, you know, the being with the skeleton on the outside. So what this means is that growth and transformation is always going to be painful. And I think that's so interesting that cancer is so linked with nurturing and motherhood and, you know, mothering, because when you give birth, it's painful. It's transformative. It transforms your body. It transforms your life, right? And so that way of describing it makes perfect sense in correlation with the exoskeleton of the crab. So being aware of that is is just so powerful here because we're going to think, and we have a tendency to think that cancer is a quiet, gentle, peaceful, loving, nurturing time. And yet it can be an astoundingly intense time where we learn so much, where we see so much, where we're pushed out of our comfort zones. Now, Pluto is squared the nodal axis. And this is significant because this starts on the 17th of July. And so this changes our collective destiny, our karmic destiny. This has this huge shift moving us forward. The North Lunar Mode node moves from Taurus to Aries. We're actually very comfortable with it in Aries. That's going to be a good shift for us. And the South Lunar Node moves from Scorpio to Libra. Now they move backwards. It moves actually from 29 degrees to, to zero. So the nodal axes move backwards, which I think is really cool. Also, this marks the Cardinal Grand Cross, which is at 29 degrees Capricorn, 29 degrees Aries, equally 29 degrees Libra, and the new moon at about 25 degrees Cancer. And this is an extremely powerful configuration that moves us towards action, that moves us towards, you know, really taking charge of our lives and what we want and embracing the extraordinary. Now, Jupiter is squared Mercury, which brings big visionary ideas forward. So that's going to be a very big thing during this time is that we have a visionary tendency. We tend to look at at things big. You know, everybody's looking at things big, but we're going to very much be setting our sights on something bigger, something bolder, something something better. So that's going to be cool. Neptune has tried the sun and the moon. So with Neptune trying the sun and the moon, it means everything has to have a spiritual meaning to it. We we are craving a deeper spiritual context. And this is called the spiritual context of Neptune. So that's coming forward very, very powerfully here. We are falling out of a cage, out of being stuck, out of being overwhelmed, out of feeling like I can't. And so this is going to be a big thing for us. We are moving forward in a way that's important, in a way that's powerful, in a way that has us seeing ourselves. We are moving from a time where we felt overwhelmed, trapped, I can't, to yes, I absolutely can. We might not be sure how, <laughs> we might not have figured that part out quite yet, but we are definitely getting there and we are definitely moving forward. The Eight of Swords is reversed, is, is liberation. It is a sense of freedom within ourselves. We're also going to see that we're not as, as prone to overthink, overanalyze, you know, kind of rip everything apart. So just be aware of that. It moves us to the lovers reversed. Now, this is Gemini energy that we can be having a bit of difficulty with. So do be aware of that. We can also be having a bit of difficulty embracing our own duality, our own complexity. So being aware of that as well is going to be very important. There is a sense here of, I need to move forward in what I love, but I'm questioning what I love, what I desire, what's important to me. You're going to be feeling at times you're pulled into very different directions, okay, during this time. And you're going to be questioning, okay, which way do I move forward? Like, what is right for me? How do I get to where I need to be? And those are big questions, but there's also power moving you to what you need to do next. There's a real sense here of being just a little bit too logical, like you're trying to take the love out of the, the configuration. Don't, don't do that. Listen to your heart, listen to your soul, listen to yourself. Your, your solar plexus, your, your gut is going to be very in tune to things. And you can find that you can have a little bit of a, a wobbly stomach, like a little bit of a sensitive stomach. So being aware of that is going to be so important because that's going to be kind of like your canary in, in, the, in the mind, right? So listening, listening to your gut, listening to what you love, listening to the fact that your angels, your spirit guides, they're blessing you, they're moving you forward. That is such a powerful thing. It moves us to the five of swords. The five of swords is the fact that during this moon, 
we are going to be facing hardships, hurts, pains, disappointments that we have faced before. And yet there is a confidence to us that has us looking at things so differently than the way that we have before. And that's going to be very liberating. That's going to be very powerful. That's going to be very authoritative within our lives. I see the, the Saturn energy coming through quite strongly. Capricorn, we're ruled by Saturn it, in the solar system. So Saturn is the planet of rules and of structure and of order, top-down structure. And we're going to be seeing here that we're really finding our voice. We're finding the way that we need to move forward for us, what we deeply desire, what we deeply want, what we deeply need, where we need to be for ourselves, and how to look at things very, very differently. But we're going to be finding that this moon, it brings up things that we're like, well, I would rather that stayed buried, or I would rather not have to look at that, or I would rather just be moving forward. So be aware of that. With the strength card here, now this is Leo energy. So there's very strong Leo energy here as well. Leo is ruled by the sun. The sun is going to be very powerful to us. It's going to illuminate quite a lot. Remember the sun is in cancer. Cancer is our sister sign. It blesses us and it can annoy us like no other. So understanding that and knowing what we, we desire and how we want to move forward is going to be very important. We are reigning a lot in. We are looking at things very, very differently than we have before. We're also going to find that our allies, like not, yeah, it's allies, but it's the people that we pair really well with during this moon. It's, it's going to kind of surprise us. It's going to be like, wow, I didn't expect that, or I didn't expect, you know, this. And, oh, I, I, I hadn't, seen this person in that way, or I didn't think they would understand. So that's going to be a very big thing. There is a sense of I'm moving forward in passion and in love and in determination. We can also feel as if we were given something impossible to achieve. And this is going to be a moon. You know, the new moon is when we set our intentions. And this is going to be a moon where we really start to set the attention of what do I love, even though right now we're not that comfortable with asking ourselves that question. So we're going to see ourselves being able to charge forward, being able to go after what it is that we want, being able to look at things differently. And what's really cool is that, you know, the North Node moves from Taurus to Aries energy, right? And it moves, then the South Node moves from Scorpio to Libra energy. And this is powerful because they're sister signs, right? Taurus is the sister sign of Scorpio and Aries is the sister sign of Libra. What we're going to have here is a shift. And this shift, we're going to feel very comfortable in the role of the authority, the head of the dragon. The North Lunar Node is also called in astrology, the head of the dragon. The South Lunar Node is known as the tail. So the South Lunar Node balances. What we're going to be seeing here and what we're going to be asking is what balances me? We're good at the head. We're good at seeing, you know, roaring, yelling, you know, that type of stuff, like chomping at our enemies type of thing. We're good at that. But what balances us? That's going to be a really important question to ask ourselves during this time. Because we move from strength to the emperor. Strong, very strong fire sign energy here, right? We have Leo and then we have Aries. This is determination. This is focus. This is being very in tune with our internal masculine energy, you know, our sacred masculine energy. This is embracing what we love, what we want. You also have very strong paternal energy from the other side, you know, connecting with you, connecting with you, guiding you, loving you, saying, I'm here for you. So it doesn't have to be your, it doesn't have to be your, your father or father figure. It can be a grandparent or a great grandparent. You might not even have known them, but there's a richness in there in the stories that are told around them. And there's a richness in their connection with you. So you don't, you don't have to know them at all, but there's a strong connection with you. And there's a sense here of, it's almost like feeling like a fatherly hand on your shoulder, like guiding you. It's kind of like, okay, let's, let's move it over here type of thing. And they're trying to get your attention. They're, they're trying to lead you forward in a very, you know, kind of succinct, powerful, you know, personal way. And they're opening up doors for you saying, okay, you can see really well the head of the dragon, right? It's coming through very, very strongly. Make sure we're paying attention to what balances us, to what harmonizes us. We can be so caught up 
in what needs to be done, how things need to move forward, that we can forget a lot else. So being aware of that is going to be a very important thing. Let's dive into what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Okay, what's so interesting here is that as we're releasing a lot of worries, doubt, fears, right? The cage of our own mind, the eight of swords. We're not feeling very protected. And yet we know that there's a win-win outcome. It's almost like we feel like we're free, free falling just a bit. We're free. We're, we're feeling like we're taking this enormous risk. Even if other people are sitting there and they're like, why are you taking so long? Like, just do this. For us, it's a huge leap. So be aware of that. Be aware that whatever you're going after during this moon and during this time, it's astoundingly important to you. It leads to a win-win outcome. It's a very good thing. We don't feel as protected. We don't feel as secure. It leads us to knowing that luck is on our side. But as we were talking about before with the emperor, it's like we don't feel in balance. We're, we're having a hard time. It can be connected with that Libra energy. Even though we have the full moon in Libra right here saying a win-win outcome is forecast, like we're moving in the right direction. We just feel out of balance. And it's out of balance with what we love. It's out of balance with what's sacred and important to us, where we need to be, how we need to move forward for ourselves, you know, what we desire. And there's a sense of, it's sort of saying here, not wanting to be so obsessed with something. So it can be that with love, where we're not letting ourselves fully fall. And it doesn't mean that we have to be falling in love with a person. It can be that I'm not fully falling in love with anything right now. I'm guarding my heart. I'm guarding myself. But luck is on your side. And you're moving forward in a blessing. And it moves us to the answers you need are coming. And growth is coming forward as well. And this is the full moon in Gemini. The battles that we are going to face they aren't necessarily battles, but they are hardships, doubts, fears, you know, people that we've come into contact with before and that have really knocked us off our game. And we're going to be finding now we're handling these situations in very different ways, but also very powerful ways for ourselves. It leads us to you are very close to achieving your goals. We aren't self-reflecting though. We want to charge forward. We want to go after what we want to go after. And we want to keep on moving forward at almost a breakneck speed. So to be, be aware of that, that it can be rather overwhelming. But we are very close to achieving what we have set out to achieve. We will have a tendency during this time to get in our own way because we're seeing things so differently. We're moving forward so differently. We're, we're questioning so much. And it brings us to the realization that it's time to release our negativity and to nourish ourselves properly, to nourish our souls and what we deeply desire and what we want and what we're longing for in our lives and to take that stance of, I know what I want. I know how to lead my life forward. I know how to go after what I desire in my existence. And this is going to be a time for us, Capricorn, where we're trusting ourselves again. And we're trusting ourselves in a very big way and in a very honest way. And we're not being ruled by fear. A lot of our past has been being ruled by fear and doubt and negativity and hurt and pain. And now it is time to simply nourish our souls, simply embrace what we love. It brings us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that's the princess of wands. We have a lot of fire sign energy here. And we can be rather reckless with it, rather naive or young. And there's also the sense of somebody who isn't thinking everything through, who's just charging forward. So 
just just be aware of that. Just be very mindful about people being overly passionate and like wanting to pull you into their excitement. It's not don't get excited, but there's something here where you're thinking, oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> and and you're right, <laughs> but this person is going to have to learn. Let's see what spirit has to say. And this is wish. This is going to be a time also where you can just set your wishes. You can say, I wish for, you know, whatever it is in your life and let yourself have your wishes. Let yourself dare to dream because it's feeling right now, Capricorn, you haven't let yourself do that or you've had your wishes, but they've almost been like armor. Like, oh, I wish for this, but we do so and like run away and hide from it. Now is the time to say, this is what I wish for. And how can I start moving my life towards my wish, towards what I desire, what I love in my life? It brings us to our subconscious tarot message, which is the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands is a realization that we've carried a lot and we've been carrying a lot. It's our worries, our doubts, our fears, our creativity, our passion, our insight, our ideas. And it's time. It's time to let them go. It's time to give them voice. It's time to start moving forward in the world that we want, in the world that we need. It brings us to our subconscious Luna message, which is power. And we're going to see as we move towards the full moon, we're moving towards power. And it says communication is key. This is the, the new moon in Gemini reversed. We're having a hard time communicating. We know what we want. We, we can see what we desire, but we're, har we're having a hard time communicating our power, our tenacity, our desire. So be aware of this. All right. All right, Capricorn. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Capricorn. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless, and have a blessed moon. Bye.